Bigmelion, Act Two. The next day in Higgins' house on 10 Wimble Street, Higgins and the Colonel, Colonel Pickering, are talking shop when Mrs. Beers, Henry's very reasonable maid, maid mean servant, tells him that a girl with a funny accent has come to the door. Thinking he might get some good material from her, he decides to let her in. The flower girl from the night before comes in wearing some relatively clean clothes and what may just be the funniest hat you have ever seen. She introduces herself as Eliza's as Eliza Doolittle. Higgins is about to throw her out. He already has her accent when she demands to be given speaking lessons. After some deliberation, Higgins and Pickering decide to take her on as a client. Only they treat the whole thing like a bit. They really want to see if they can pass her off as a duchess in six months' time. Higgins tells Mrs. Beers to go burn all of Eliza's clothes and get her clean. While she's off in the shower, a hulking dust man, that's British for garbage man, comes in and introduces himself as Alfred Doolittle, Eliza's father. Doolittle proceeds to talk Higgins into giving him five pounds for booze, for drinking, in return for leaving Eliza alone. Higgins, amazed by his speaking ability, does give him some cash, but their discussion is interrupted by the entrance of a Japanese lady. She turns out to be Eliza in a kimono, a Japanese dress, and without all the dirt and the silly clothes, Eliza really pretty. Eliza is really pretty. Eliza loves all the attention so much she wants to go down to where all the other flower girls hang out and strut her stuff. Higgins knows this is a bad idea and tells her so. Mrs. Beers lures her away with the promise of new clothes. Eliza howls like a punchy, again before skipping off stage. Bickering and Higgins shake their heads in disbelief. They have got a lot of work to do. Big Million Act 3 Act 3 finds us at the apartment of Henry Higgins' mom. Higgins, it seems, wants to test his work at a party. She'll soon be throwing. Mrs. Higgins doesn't approve of the idea. You get the feeling she doesn't approve of most things Higgins does. But Higgins doesn't listen. He is not one to take no for an answer. He is also, we find out, not interested in women really, except women like his dear old mother. Higgins assures his mother that Eliza will be on her best behavior and talk only about the weather and other people's health. Turns out the whole thing isn't much of a party. The only guests are the mother and sister from the first act, Mrs. and Miss Innsford Hill, good old Freddy, Bickering, and of course Eliza. Eliza enters the party lost, looking stunning, very beautiful, and proceeds to ask everyone how they do. She acts a bit like a robot, a beautiful robot with a perfect accent and a very small vocab. Higgins spends most of the time trying to figure out why the Innsford Hills look so familiar. By the time he figures it out, Eliza has forgotten to, st forgotten to stick to the script. She starts talking about how her aunt was didn't by someone. Didn't means killed by someone. Freddy, not the sharpest tool in the shed, is laughing like an idiot. His vocab seems pretty small too. Haha, <laughs> how awfully funny, killing. He thinks Eliza is a comedian, not a cockney girl. Higgins, embarrassed, gives the signal a cuff, and Eliza heads off like clockwork. After the Innsford Hills leave, Mrs. Higgins give, gives Henry and Pickering a talking to. She scolds them, insults them, like they are little boys. They assure her that they are treating Eliza well, not like a doll at all. But Mrs. Higgins doesn't buy it. 
Things start to get heavy, and we are not exactly sure why. You idiots, she says. If Eliza learns to act like a lady, she won't be able to do anything to make a living. Higgins and Pickering skip away unconcerned. They didn't care.